after. I'll tell you when. Some of you fine folks might have to help us during this. Keep the cats herded, right? Okay. All right. What's the first thing you did every night? All right. Help them out. May be seated. Neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. That is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We'll be able to separate us from the love of God. That is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. That is in Christ Jesus, our Can't hear you. That is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. I'm going to shout it out. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves me. Sing it.
can't help us. We can't hear you. Jesus teaches us to care. This week, how, ma how many can remember when you went to VBS? And the offerings you took up for uh, whatever uh, cause it was that year. We've done the same thing this year, but we added a second one. Did you guys have a, a competition between the boys and the girls too? Did the same thing this week. The, the money offering this week goes to kids around the world. To, to help them come to know the Lord. And, but we added in this year a local, matter of fact, right in-house, food bank that Ron and Pat had headed up. And so that's what all the canned goods and the Raymond noodles and uh, rigatoni, uh, we've got some uh, pancakes, all kinds of stuff for the food bank to help out people locally that is in need of some food, okay? Those you can contribute to all year long, and I'm sure you do because it, it, we keep it there. But we're going to take up an offering right now that will go right along with uh, the kids' offering to help the kids around the world. So if you guys would... Uh oh, the regular offering, I'm sorry. This is for the regular offering. I'm sorry. This is for the regular offering. Just the four boys. Yes. Yes. If you have, if you have an offering for the missions, after after after. Afterward, you can come up and pray by just like you used to and put it in the, the boys' or the girls' buckets. That matter of fact, somebody already started. Let's, uh, let's have a word of prayer. Father, as we come to, to you and Father, as we give to your mission, to, to your cause, to your Father, for, as we give our regular offering to you this morning, Father, we just ask that you would that you would do as you always have. Use it, multiply it where needed. And Father, above all, let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name. Amen. Blesses his gifts of his children Give and it will be given to you Press down, shaking together Come on kids Open your heart and just see what he will do
really dangerous. I want you all to help me say Romans 8.39. Do you all remember it? I do. Do you remember it? Adults, you can cheat. Look in your bulletin. That's all right. You ready? How's it start? Neither... Romans, there we go, Romans 8.39, thank you kids, give them all a great big round of applause, they'll come back at the very end. Matter of fact, in Romans chapter 8, we read, what then shall we say? Just put it onto the scripture there. What then shall we say in response to these things? Uh Uh-oh. I'm not sure where it went. Um, It's appearing on a different monitor all of a sudden. Probably close out Easy Worship and reopen it. It's still not completely closed. You might need to do a Control-Alt-Delete, Task Manager, look for Easy Worship and bring it back up. What shall we say then in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? If it is God who justifies, who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered, knowing all these things. We are more than conquerors through Him who love us. For I am convinced, verse 38, that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, any heavenly rulers, neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor death, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Thank you, God, for this opportunity to share in the Word. I pray that you would help us, Lord, today in these few moments of time that we have to uh, consider how much you love us, to think about what you did to demonstrate your love for us while we were still sinning, while we were rebelling, while we were doing our own thing, going our own way, being what we wanted to be, and doing all the things we wanted to do only, while we were selfish. pray that you would help us to consider this and then consider what you did to redeem us so that we might experience, not just know that, God, you love us, but to experience the deep love of Jesus, your Son. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. The depth of the love of Jesus. One of the Psalms says, I go to the valleys, and you are there. I go to the highest mountains, and you are there. I go as far as I can go this way, and you are there. I go as far as I can go this way, and you are there. No matter where I go, God's love transcends, and God's love is there. Sometimes I've met a couple folks in life, and they say, you wouldn't believe what I've done. God surely can't love me. That's what the enemy would like you to think. That's what the devil hopes you'll believe. But the Word tells us, Jesus loves you. Remember that verse from a long, long time ago in a land far, far away that they tell me that 75% of Americans no longer know. We live in a world that doesn't know Jesus, that doesn't know the love of God. The Word of God says in John 3, 16 that God loved the world so much that He gave His one and only Son, His unique, His begotten, His very self, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish but have eternal life. That's John 3.16, one of the simplest verses. Perhaps you learned that a long time ago in a Bible school. But one thing's for certain. Jesus Christ does love you. And He loves us. And God loved the world so much that He gave of Himself. 
Another thing that's very, very true that the kids learned this week is that Jesus invites every one of us. Jesus invites you that He died for the whole world. He died so that He might save every man, woman, boy, and girl. And if anyone in the very end does not know Him, it is because they chose to refuse the love of God. Because the Word tells tells us that God loved us all. He redeemed and paid enough for us all. I just believe that because it's truth. The blood of Jesus Christ is effective and powerful and available for every one of us. Matter of fact, one of the stories they learned this week was about an invitation. And one of the verses that the master speaks at the end of that story, it says, Go out into the roads and the country lanes. Aren't you glad that the word says that? I don't know if exactly what was going on, but I can only imagine in that passage there in Luke that Jesus surely was thinking about Sumter, South Carolina. Go out into the highways and byways, the country lanes, the dirt roads, the very far-flung reaches of the world. On the other side of the other side, God says, go there and tell the people that I am in love with them. Matter of fact, the story goes something like this. In Luke 14, it says, At the time of the banquet, he sent his servant to tell those who had been invited, Come, everything's ready. But they all alike begin to make excuses. The first said, Oh, I've just bought a field. i got to go and see it. Please excuse me. Another said, I just bought five yoke of oxen. Just got me a new tractor. I can't come. I'm on my way to try them out. Please excuse me. Still another said, I just got married. I can't come. I've got got some important things to do. So, the servant came back and reported this to the master. Everybody's got someplace else to be. Everybody's got something else to do. Doesn't that sound like our world? We're caught up in our busyness. We're so busy. Oh, I got to go to the beach. I got to go to the mountains. I got to go to the ball game. I got to go to practice. I got to go to here. And no one has time for God's house anymore. Moms and dads, make time for your children. You wanna, you, we want to sit back and whine and complain and moan and groan about the problems in America? Can I tell you that the problems of America can begin to be solved if you'll get your children to church? Is anybody going to say amen to that? Amen. Get your children to church because the day is coming close. When time will be no more. You want to find out what happens to those who don't have time for God? They don't go to heaven. doesn't mean God doesn't love you. Oh, God loves you infinitely. You'll go to hell over Jesus Christ's dead body on an old rugged cross. Because He loved you. But you can't go to heaven if you don't accept the invitation and prepare yourself for the banquet. Can you imagine if you went to a big fancy wedding and... You tried to show up with mud all over your face and ripped up jeans and a dirty old t-shirt and smelling like three pigs. Do you think they'd want you to come in the house in the wedding? Uh. No, let's rearrange it. What if the preacher wanted to preach your wedding like that? They'd think that preacher gone crazy. I'd think the preacher gone crazy. I'm after Morgan. I need to try that sometime. I don't know what wedding I've got next. I'll try it at the next wedding. Oh man, the servant came back and reported this to the master. Then the owner of the house, he was so angry. He was so upset. He ordered his servant, go out quickly into the streets and the alleys of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, the lame. That's us. The people who weren't originally part of the great big Jewish family, he says, I take them all in. Sir, the servant said, We have done what you ordered to be done, but there's still room. Then the master told his servant, Go to the roads and the country lanes and compel them to come in so that my house may be full. Compel them. That's an amazing word. Do you understand what compel means? Do whatever it takes, but get them in. Because the time is coming to an end, moms and dads. Time is coming to an end, grandma and grandpa. Get there quickly. Do whatever you have to. Cancel everything else on your schedule. But do what you have to do to make sure that your children know and experience the love of God for if you do not one day you will be on the outside looking in and you'll wish you were not so how do you get to go to that banquet one thing is for certain Jesus will forgive trust and live 
Jesus, that famous passage in John 3.16, we don't often know what comes before it when it's talking about the great love of God. That love that Romans talks about. That love that John talks about. That love that we just talked about in that banquet in there in Luke. But it says, Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the wilderness, so the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes may have eternal life. Look to Jesus and you will live. You see, that's what happened in that Old Testament story when Moses was in the wilderness and the serpents had bit them. They had to fashion this this bronze serpent and they held it up and if they looked there they would be healed and they would live today there is one whose name is Jesus that if you will look at him the one whose sins of us all were placed upon him oh it's an ugly place to look it's a it's a scary place to look I I don't want to think about Christ having to die on the cross for my egregious ugly horrible terrible no good sins but he did it because he loved you and he loved me look to Jesus and you will live This is the promise of God's Word. God's Word. And ultimately it says Jesus gives so you can live. You know, the Word of God says there on that next slide, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. That whole verse there, it goes on to say, you see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely, that next slide there with the scripture, very rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though for a good person, some might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates His own love for us in this, while we were still sinners. Literally there, while we were still sinning, while we were still doing what we had always done, when we were throwing our fist at God. In our culture, we don't just throw fists anymore. We throw fingers and everything else at God. People do it all the time. God, I know you gave me the energy to wake up this morning, but I don't have time for you. God, I know you're the one who made the sun shine and caused the rain to fall, that you're the one who put the sun in space and caused the stars to light the night and the moon, but I don't have time for you. God, I know you're the one that if without you, I couldn't even walk without you holding my hand, but I don't have time for you. Rebellion against God. Don't think you're so big and bad and you can do it without God. You can't. And why would you want to live life without knowing the fullness of God's love? Why would you want to live life without experiencing the wonderful joy that when you lay down at night and put your head on the pillow, you don't have to wonder, I wonder what would happen if tomorrow the world ended. You know, if you're in love with Jesus, there's no worry about tomorrow. Do you know what would happen to your eternal, never-dying soul if you died tonight? Would you experience the love of God tomorrow? Or would you be out somewhere away from Him? You see, the depth of the love of Jesus is phenomenal. It doesn't matter how far you've gone. It doesn't matter how many times you've, you've rebelled against God. Would you come home today? Would you fall in love with the Master? You know, Micah talks about, we talk about this depth of love. It says, who is a God like you? This Old Testament God that sometimes we think he's pretty vicious. He's not. He was still loving people then. Who is a God like you who pardons sins and forgives the transgression of the remnant of his inheritance? You do not stay angry forever, but delight to show mercy. You will again have compassion on us. You will tread our sins underfoot and hurl all of our iniquities or our sins into the depths of the sea. They tell me that if you go out in the Pacific Ocean, the depth of the sea is so deep. That the tallest mountain in the world is in the Pacific Ocean and it's covered by water. I don't know about you, but that's pretty deep and that's pretty big because it's bigger than, than, than the Himalayas. It, it's bigger than these giant mountains on top of the earth that we look at and we go, wow. I'll never forget when we had gone out to Seattle and we were flying back uh, across the state of Washington and Mount Rainier is there. And for the long time, for a little while we were flying and it, it was a nice, beautiful spring day sunshine. And we were way up there. And then all of a sudden it looked like the ground got a lot closer. But it hadn't. Not as far as the plane's altitude. The plane had stayed the same. The ground did get closer because we flew over 
Mount Rainier, and in the middle of this nice, beautiful, sunshiny day, it was some cold snow on top of that thing. And it looked as though we could almost reach our hand out and grab some snow off the top of that mountain. And I think to myself, God takes our sins, our ugliness, our dirtiness, and buries them far as the east is from the west into the depths of the sea so far so that they might not be remembered against us anymore. Human beings can't even go to the depths of that sea. That's why I know that nothing can throw them back up at us because we don't have the capability of going there. But God's grace can take us, transform us, and change us. Micah says, who is this God that can do this? I want to tell you his name is Jesus. The depth of the love of Jesus is far beyond what you and I could ever imagine or hope or even understand. I can't think, I, I can't figure it out. Did you hear that Romans verse? For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels or demons, anything in heaven, Neither the present nor the future nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all of creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Nothing. God loves you, period. It's kind of cool. It's not like those radio or car commercials. You ever hear those things on the, on the, on, on the radio? And at the end of that thing, you know, they're telling you the prices of these cars that are like crazy cheap. And then they ha- hire this guy who can talk fast. And then I think they speed it up. And he goes, only applies to this particular car that was original. Blah, 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 you know, and it says it so fast. And you're like, all of these exceptions... Or have you ever seen it on television when they have the commercial? And then at the bottom in this really tiny print... Now that I have a DVR, you know what I have done? I have paused the television. And I've gone up to the screen and I have read those nearly 200 words that they show for 1.5 seconds. I'm glad to tell you this, that at the end of Romans 8.39, there is a period. There is not an asterisk. There is no fine print. God loves you, period. Now, what you will do with it is another story. What are you going to do about the invitation is another story. What will you do with this love of God? Will you say, God, I don't need you. I don't have time for you. I don't care how much you love me. Or will you say, I embrace you and I make time for you? Because I got news for you. If you're in love with Jesus, you'll make time for him. Tell your wife you don't ever have time for her, never talk to her, never look at her, never come home. And see how long that love affair will last. Amen. Wives, too. Women are busy nowadays, too. How many of y'all want to go the rest of your life and never see your children? Never talk to them. Oh, my goodness. I keep wondering when they're going to come out with a super drug that makes kids stay at like four. (laughs) I was looking at a picture the other day of K4 back to school. And there was Trey and Wes. I hardly recognized them. They were so sweet and cute and loving And their feet didn't stink. I want them old enough to go to the bathroom, but I don't want them much older. You know what I'm talking about. But I love them regardless. Every once in a while I hear people and their stories on my parents, they didn't love me anymore. I can't imagine that. I want to tell you something. God, your Father in heaven, loves you, period. There's no asterisk. There's no fine print. I want to tell you, He's demonstrated His love for us while we were sinning, while we were throwing our fist at God, while we were going out and sloshing our minds and confusing the world and hurting others and hurting ourselves. Christ died for you, my friend. I hope that you realize that. Make time for God. Not once a year, not not twice a year, but make time for God every day and come into the house of the Lord because the Word says it was Christ's custom. As Jesus went to the house of the Lord, it was His custom. When the church was at its most wicked, when the church was at its most corrupt, when the church was, was filled with more hypocrites than in the history of the church, they were selling salvation by the dollar and by the pit. Pigeon and turtle dove. They were selling salvation and all of these things. 
And Christ still went to church. Because he didn't go because of what they were doing there. He went because he knew he was with people. Someone would be there that would worship his father with him. That's why we're here on Sundays. Not because we like the lights. Not because we like the color of the pews. Not because we like the preacher. Not because we like the music. Not because it's not too loud or, not, or just too soft. Not because they use the wrong translation of the Bible. Because they come to worship the Lord and say, God, I love you. Amen. Period. Isn't it fascinating how we love God and we have all that fine print at the end of our I love you, Jesus? Get rid of the fine print. Get rid of the asterisk. Just love Jesus. If you want to do that, here's what you'll need to do. Admit. Admit what? Admit you've sinned. You know, that's one of the... Do you remember Fonzie? And I, you kids don't know who Fonzie is. Just, just, just pause. I know you don't know. Just admit. Fonzie, you remember his hardest thing in the world? He, 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 could, he just couldn't do it. I'm s- s- sorry. I remember that episode. Man, he, he moaned and groaned. and Oh, maybe y'all seen it on TV land. Man, he moaned and groaned. He couldn't. His tongue would wiggle. His knees would tremble. Sometimes you've got to say, God, I'm sorry. And if you can't get past A, you'll never get B and C. But you'll have to admit you're sorry to God. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's the ultimate. That's what you must do if you want to be a Christian, is you must believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Because the Word says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you will be saved. Believe. And then confess. And you know what? That confession is not once and done. You must confess daily. The Apostle Paul, I don't know about you, but I wish I, I wish I could walk like Paul. As a matter of fact, you could if you would walk in the Spirit. Paul said, I die daily. I confess Christ daily. See, to be a Christian, it's a daily experience. It's not one trip to the altar, got my ticket punched, now I'm going to sit back and wait for the banquet. No. Like I said earlier, who would want to go to the fanciest wedding of the year and they're... Cut off blue jeans covered in mud, layered in pig scum and everything. Not that pigs are bad. I mean, bacon's all right. But I don't want to eat bacon when it's covered with mud and junk. Amen? Confess daily that Jesus is Lord. One of my favorite stories they learned this week. I love this story. Leave it on that slide there for a little bit. And there in Luke, it talks about the prodigal son. One day that boy, I don't know how old he would have been, but he looks at his dad and he said, Dad, I demand my inheritance. There was a law then that once you became of age, you could demand your portion of the inheritance from your father at any time, and he had to give it to you according to the law. And so this young man demanded his portion of the inheritance, and he took it, and he went out to live. The Bible says he went out and did riotous living. Riotous is not righteous. Riotous means he was rioting. He was reveling in his sin. He was as big and as bad and he knew everything. He's like all of your teenagers. He knew everything. Shoot, he's like my... No, I won't say that. He's like 10 and 11 year olds and 12 year olds and 13 year olds. Kids mature so much faster, don't they, nowadays? He knew everything and he left his dad and he went out into the world and guess what? He had friends. I mean, he he, he lived out Garth Brooks' song, I've got friends in low places. He had friends everywhere. Till one day he woke up, went to the ATM machine somewhere in the middle of heathen land. Now they didn't really have ATMs, but he went and he checked and you know what? One of his friends said, hey man, you got any money for some... Weed? Dude, um, I, can't, I don't know where I put it. Somebody else come and ask some money. You got, you got some more money for some women? Uh, he was out of money. And you know what? Before long, all of his friends found out he didn't have money. And you know how many friends he had after he had no money? He had as many friends as he had money. Zero. I got friends in low places. 
They were all gone and he was getting kind of hungry. You know, McDonald's, they don't take credit very often on your word anymore. Yesterday we went to town and one of my sons forgot to take his wallet and there was something there he wanted and I was the mean dad. I said, where's your money? Well, I think it's in mom's purse. Where's mom's purse? Mama, where's your purse? I don't have my purse with me. I didn't bring it. Nobody said I need it. I just got my wallet with my little card in it. Money's at the house. I said, that's okay. Just go tell that man up here in Target. Just tell him you'll bring the money back next week and see if he'll let you take it home. <laughs> just tell him, like you tell your daddy. I'll pay you back next week. I'll pay you as soon as we get home. What happens to that mom and daddy? I got friends that do. He couldn't find anyone who would offer him any credit. The next thing you know, he finds himself a job. You know where he found a job? In a place where a good Jewish boy would never, ever want to go. In a pig pen. When Jesus says this and he tells the people listening that day, these, these, these country ag agrarian farmer people that are listening to Christ tell this story, this parable of this prodigal son. As soon as he told these Jewish folks and he went and he got a job working for a pig farmer, I can only imagine they all went, Oh, he can never come home. I don't know if you understand that cultural implication, but a good Jewish boy, if he ever worked in a pig pen, he just... Don't even come back. You can't come home. We don't understand. All we see in the story is the, the massiveness that the daddy says, Oh, I love you. Come on. That's the end. If you don't know it, I'll tell you this thing. But I mean, it's a powerful story. Jesus says the impossible. This young man has been as bad as you can be and taken the worst job that you could take. He's working in a pig pen. And one day he even gets so hungry and he says, It's such a bad time. He says, I want to eat what they're eating. I still remember the smell of my aunt and uncle's pig pen. I got news for you. There ain't nothing they eat that I want to eat. Now, I might want to eat that pig. I don't know how they eat what they eat, and it turns into what they turn into. But bacon smells pretty good. And finally, the Scripture says, One day the young man came to his senses. It literally says that. Read it in Luke 15. It says, he came to his senses and he said, I'm going to go home. I'm going to tell my dad I'm sorry and I shouldn't have done what I did. And if you'll just give me a job working on his farm, at least I won't be living in the pig pen. Because I know this is wrong. I know it's not right. I know I can't keep this up. I know my life is just going down the, the drain and the water's almost gone. And my life is just about to evaporate into nothingness. And he doesn't have any luggage doesn't have any servants. He doesn't have any money to lug, load home. It's just him. I don't think he even owned a shepherd's staff. He had nothing. Except for the tattered, dirty, pig, smelly clothes that he had on. He couldn't wash up. He couldn't clean up to get home. He didn't have nothing to clean up and go into. He's lost everything, the Scripture says. And Jesus says this boy is walking home. And he's rehearsing the speech. Dad, I'm sorry for the sins that I've done. If you'll just forgive me and let me work in your, in your, as a servant, I'll never, I, I won't bother you. I just need a job because I'm hungry. And he practiced his speech all the way home. Finally, as he's coming, and I don't know what kind of dad this must have been, but this dad something else. The scripture says that the father saw him while that boy was still a far ways off in the King James. While he was still at the end of the road, while he was still at the end of the driveway, Daddy Lewis sitting on the porch, perhaps that day he was praying for his son, Oh God, send my boy home. And he real I, 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 this must be some kind of love. He saw him walking towards the house. And the scriptures doesn't say that the daddy crossed his arms and said, hmm, I knew that sorry good for nothing son of mine would come home one day if he got tired and hungry and no money. Well, I got news for him. He ain't getting nothing else from me. I'm glad he didn't say that. You know, that's what a lot of us would want to say sometime. That's probably the way we feel sometime. I'm not doing anything. I'm so sick and tired. You mumble and mutter. We mumble and mutter. I mumble and mutter. And the dad gets up off of the chair 
And he starts running for his boy. He runs for his boy. And as he meets up to his boy, he pig scent, dirty, nasty. Oh, must have been awful. Grabs his arms around him and hugs him. And says, I love you. Did you hear me? I love you. And his boy starts going over the speech that he had been preparing for however many miles. And he was a long ways off. It may have been a 50 mile walking journey. I don't know. But it was a long ways. He had practiced the speech. He had it down. And as he begins to say the speech to his daddy, his daddy's not even listening. Because he knows his son has had to go through an awful lot just to get to that point. And the son was confessing and the father was making preparations for a celebration. Hurry, go slaughter the calf. Hey, get me some clothes. Get the water warm. My son who is dead, my son who is lost, has come home. This child of mine that was lost, this child, my boy, has come home. Mama, put all his favorite food. Servants, go get everything ready. But dad, I just want to be a Hush, son. We've got a party to prepare. This child of mine who is dead and lost is alive. How deep is the love of God? Neither height nor depth. Put it up there. Nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. You'll have to come home. You'll have to accept the invitation. Dad anxiously was anticipating his return, but if he would have never returned, he would have never had the party. You'll have to return. You'll have to confess him as Lord daily. Do you think that boy wanted to leave? No. Do you ever think he, do you think he agreed with his daddy about everything the rest of his life? Probably not. But he had to stay at the house if he wanted to experience the benefits of dad. You'll have to experience the grace of God if you'll be part of the family. Be part of the family. Neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The depth of the love of Jesus. Oh, this has been a powerful VBS. It tells us God loves us. God loves us. God loves you. Would you stand and let's pray. Father, we love you so much and we're thankful for this day that you've made. Pray that you would help us to know you and the power of the Christ. Lord, if there's someone here today that feels a lot like that prodigal that they've been wandering a long time. And today, I pray that your Holy Spirit would move upon them so that they might come to their senses and come home. That as he fell before his father, his father was loving him and making over him and was making a preparation that the word says that there's rejoicing in heaven when a sinner comes home, they learned this week in VBS. There's rejoicing in heaven over the one who would return. Lord, we love you. We pray that you would bless this time that we have. As this music plays as the prodigal. You may not know it. The kids know it. You can sing it softly where you are. But maybe you need to come and pray. Maybe you need to receive the Lord today. It's a good opportunity to celebrate and to know Jesus. Father, bless these moments. Move on hearts. Home to you. Falling down. I'm asking for forgiveness. There is nothing in my hands that I can give to you. Just a heart that's desperate for forgiveness. Are you desperate for the love of God? I hope you are. My hand and pick me up. Hold me, stand me, stand and hold me close. Welcome me back home. You can come home this morning on your face. Of 
will never let me go. It's amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing grace. If you are a prodigal, this is for you. Running home to Him, falling down and ask Him for forgiveness. There is nothing in your hands, nothing you can give, just a heart that's desperate for forgiveness. Take your hand. And he picked you up, helped you stand, hold you close, welcomed you back home. With a smile on his face, will never let you go. It's amazing grace, amazing grace. Amazing grace, amazing grace, amazing grace. And Lord, this morning there may be some who are in need of that amazing grace. Pray that, Lord, you would move. I pray that, God, you would speak. Perhaps there's some here today who've been running for a long time and it's awful hard. It's, it's hard to say I'm sorry. Lord, I pray that you would help them to realize that who you are is what they've been looking for. It won't be found in stuff. It won't be found in money. It won't be found in a beverage. It won't be found in anything that this world could ever offer. But it will be found through the forgiveness that comes at the foot of the cross. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. God, I pray that you would move. Lord, place within us the sense of urgency of the hour, as Jesus said. Go out into the highways and byways and compel them to come in. Lord, we're doing our best to compel them. I pray that your Holy Spirit would move upon them. Convince us, convict us of our ever need for you. We love you so much, Jesus. You might bow your heads, keep your eyes closed for just a moment. I want you to know this pastor is praying for you and your family. As your heads bowed and your eyes closed, someone might say, Pastor Sharp, Would you pray for me? This is what I need. This is what I need. Amen. Amen. This is what I need. Amen. 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 I'm praying for you, my friend. I'm praying for you. Pray that you'll experience the depth of the love of Christ. That you'll know that you know that you know that everything's right with you and your God. That you're home. That you're home where you belong. Not out into the world where God didn't make that for you. God wants you home with Him. He loves to see you at the house. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Kids, you, everyone may be seated. All the kids, come up front right here. Just right here. Just stand up right along through there. Next Sunday, we want to invite you back. We're going to have the blessing of the kids for school. And have, a, have something for you. I won't promise you it'll be a, a, a calculator or something, but I promise you it'll be something you can use at school. It might be the answers to all your math tests. Would that be good? Let's see if I can arrange that. I don't know if I can work that out or not. Now, these guys, I don't know if they told you, they're pretty anxious about something. We've got something for them for school. You got your tickets? Can't get them out your wallet. They got tickets. Friends gave the, each other tickets they wanted to. If you brought friends, you got an extra ticket. If you came, you got a ticket. If you sang this morning, you got a ticket. See, they sang because they were wanting that ticket. And they love you. But, let's see here. Oh, I don't know. Miss Glenda, you have any relatives up here? You don't have any relatives up here this morning. I, didn't, I, I was wondering about that. All, all of her babies are getting older. I'm going to let you pull out the ticket. We're not going to read it yet, but you pull it out there. Don't look. Stick your hand in there. Don't look at them. So if she picks the wrong ticket, you can be mad at Ms. Glenda. You can't be mad at Ms. Glenda for long. She's too sweet. 
All right, I've got it in my hand. We're going to find out what happens. You know, I think we should, you know, every night when we give the offering, we give them a hard time. We probably ought to just wait till next year or next week and make them come back next week to get the tablet. What do you reckon? How's that sound? All right. I think we should pray about it and everybody give it to him. (laughs) Nobody wants to do that either. (laughs) Maybe y'all should go get Mr. Vern to buy y'all one. He's he's got a bunch of legal pads at the house, right? He's got some tablets. All right, let's see here. Let me get this little bag up here. And if it's one of my children, I didn't stuff the ballot box, I promise. I told them they couldn't win. Yes, I can. Oh, see there. It's just a tie from JOS Bank. Isn't that good enough? There's a dad out there who's just dying for that tie. All right. Let's see here. Hey, I only got one. You got one? All right. I told them they got... And if the first ticket doesn't win, we'll have to pick another one, all right? Because they have to have the ticket and they got to be present. So here we go. What's the first one? Three. Everybody got three? Yeah. One. You're a winner so far. Yeah. Zero. Yeah. All right, let's go home. That's all we need. Three, one, zero. <laughs> all right. Three, one, zero. Four. Bingo. One. One. Three, one, zero, four, one. Now we're waiting. Are you got a three, one, zero, four, one, anybody? Last number is five. Three, one, zero, four, one. Five. These four girls getting shared. Three, one, zero, four, one, five, huh? You got three, one, zero, four, one, five? Awesome. Let's give them a hand. Let's draw for for the whale. All right. (laughs) You had forgotten it and had to go and had to go home and get them. Oh, here we go. Let her draw. Here we go. All right. Let's see what this number is. That's pretty funny. (laughs) Uh oh. We'll see. How about? Three, one, zero, four, one, two. Three, one, zero, four, one, two. It just came out of the box. It's her fault. It's her and Miss Glenda's fault. Anybody got it? Go on once. Three, one, zero, four, one, two. All right. All right, Kelsey, pick one out there for me. Don't look. No. Four one two, didn't you say? It was four one two. It's the last. All right, no winner. All right, here we go. Three one zero. Three two four. Three one zero three two four. No winner, huh? All right. Pick one out for me, Mr. Steve. All right, here we go. Here we go again. Three, one, zero. Four, three, eight. You got a right four, there. three, eight? Bring it over here. I thought she was one off. She's oh. Seven. Three one zero four three eight. There, you had four three nine. Well, she had four three eight. There you go. Congratulations, the whale's yours. We'll get it for you in just a minute. Okay. All right. All right. Let me pray with you, and then you're gonna play the uh, number five at the end. What's that? We wanna wrap off. We wanna wrap off Abigail. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Let's pray together. Let's all stand. And then the children are going to sing. There we go. Just put your tickets in the little box over there. If you, or, put, or take them home as a souvenir. At the end of this, if you would play the number five, Mr. Brian. Now, Lord, I thank you for this great week. I thank you, Lord, that there is a God in heaven who loves, who cares, who knows us by name. Thank you for the wonderful time we've had together and for the presence of your people. 
and the presence of these children, for your word declares, unless we become like a little child, we cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Lord, help us to have that childlike faith, that certainty, that trust, that love, that care, that compassion, that longing to give, even as that little boy who gave of his loaves and fishes to you, dear Jesus, with reckless abandon. Thank you, Lord, that you love us. Help us, Lord, in all that we do. Now, I pray that you would bless us, keep us, let your face shine on us, be gracious to us. Bless us, Lord, as we come, as we go, as we lie down and rise up, as we work and as we rest and as we play. Until we stand before you, dear Jesus, in that day when there will not be a sunset or a dawning, but we will rejoice and live with you forevermore. And hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant. In Jesus' name, amen. See you next Sunday morning for Back to School. And if you're interested in tickets for the Christian Music Day, see the bulletin or map for more details. Lock in. August 30th. You just got to, yeah, August 30th. Youth, 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 just go. Youth lock in August the 30th. See Matt. There you go.